Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and a happy new year to everyone that views this. Uh, it will be released um, sometime just after New Year's in uh, 2020-2021 um, and it's going to be my first video for 2021 and what this video is, if you can't guess, is a quick review of the Flower Class Corvettes um, booklet by John Lambert, Les Brown, um, under the Shipcraft title. Um, some quick info on the book. Um, the plate in the front says it was um, first published in 2008 and the last reprint was 2019. So I don't know if it's still in print at this moment in time, um, but obviously the last print was 2019 and um, you can still pick up copies of this. So the book, I picked up the um, softback version and the book is pretty fantastic with regards to um, reference material for those of us that are building a flower. Um, the book starts off with information about the design and the steps the Admiralty went through in, in deciding um, what craft they would use for their convoy escorts. Um, a lot of the photographs of the real ships are black and white for obvious reasons. Um, World War II, 1940s, uh, generally colour photographs weren't available. But there are so many photographs in this book, it's fantastic. The other thing of which there are loads are the technical uh, plan view and technical specification drawings for equipment, uh, ship builds, layouts, internal structures, internal layouts, etc. Um, and it goes through everything. The book itself um, charts the um, flower from its inception through to its last sort of like versions. Um, Point in case being uh, this one here, um, HMS Camellia, um, shown in its uh, short forecastle configuration. Um, and obviously, for those of us that are building this, we know that uh, they were the forecastle was extended. Um, we've got drawing specifications for the hulls. Um, with regards to uh, how it was laid out, etc. And as you go through the book, you'll find that there's loads of these drawings which detail um, all the different parts and armaments. And the layout. So the first section is the design of the flower and it talks about modifications and other bits and pieces and like I say there's great photographs. So there's some great photographs um, showing some of the anti-dazzle uh, camouflage that was used um, to make it harder for submarines to um, gauge distance etc. Lots of photographs showing the longer forecastle and the short forecastle um, and things like the mast being fore of the bridge and then aft of the bridge. And like I say that there's so many so many photographs for reference on ship layouts and it's it's quite true that not you know the ships weren't all the same um, we then go in to um, some 
specifications um, included with regards so the the flowers so initial specifications and then we a bit later on get uh, major modifications and the dates when they were kind of done authorized um, we then get modified flower specification You'll probably hear the fireworks going on outside more technical drawings technical specifications showing um, internals of the engine rooms okay and the funnel with the reciprocating boilers um, and that's basically the first section of the book um, the um, second section deals with um, what a lot of us might be interested in and that's the model products that are produced so I was actually quite interested to find that they do um, models in uh, kits from 1 350th right up to 1 48th, uh, this 1 700ths and smaller scales. Um, apparently John Piper made a kit of HMS Bluebell in 1 96th scale. Um, but what happens is that we get some nice colour photographs of the newer kits um, and we get call outs for the particular model companies so we get HP models, White Ensign models, uh, Skytrex Limited, uh, Larsenal 1400, um, Skytrex is 1600, the Commander Series models is 1 350th, uh, Skytrex Limited also do a 1 350th. There is a model uh, model IK or model IC um, one two hundredths and one one hundredth scales, so they'll be reasonably large. Uh, we then get onto Dean's Marine uh, HMS Compass Rose, uh, which was the ship, the fictional ship that was in the Cruel Sea, um, and then we come on to the Revel. Uh, and form a matchbox uh, flower. Um, there's a little bit more with regards to the 172nd scale uh, builds of these. Um, APS models also do a Bluebell, um, Australia, and a company called Metcalf Mouldings do 172nd and 148th scale. Uh, PS Ships do 148 and Fleet Scale Westwood Mouldings do 148. And then it calls out a number of companies that do accessories. Now, if within the accessories, something which I found quite interesting there's a German company um, called Hecker and Goros who produce. Apparently they produce two packs, each containing three figures of um, allied Royal Navy sailors. Which for people wanting to include extra figures on their uh, flower in 172nd scale would be absolutely fantastic. It then goes on to a model maker showcase and there are some really nice made kits. It starts off with some of the smaller scales, so 1700 and a 1350 and then it goes into the 172 scale. Um, this particular model by Ted Taylor is a straight out of the box kit and then it goes on to Joseph uh, Neumeyer. Uh, Jewel at Sea, his fantastic diorama of a flower attacking an S boat, or maybe an S boat, um, fancying its chances attack, attacking a, a flower. Um, 
but absolutely fantastic. And you can, if you look at Great Little Ships website, I believe on there they have a link to the online photo gallery for this particular diorama. Um, and then we have uh, Mark Husband, his radio controlled uh, flower. What we then do is we then get a number of colour schemes um, for various flowers at various dates throughout World War II. This one I found quite interesting, HMS Burdock, this kind of yellow and dark sea grey colour scheme. We've got a USS Saucy here for 1942. And we also have HMS Bluebell 1942, which is in a um, subtle camouflage scheme. We have, I think we have, yeah, we have HMS, uh, HMCS Snowberry um, in its box art camouflage scheme. And we have, again, HMS Bluebell 1945 in a pale grey and kind of a dark blue camouflage scheme. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I shall bring that up. I should do that so it will be upside down unfortunately on the video. But great colour call outs and, and camouflage schemes. We then get a complete Corvette build list, every ship that was made and its date that it was laid down, date that it was launched, date that it was completed and what its fate was. And the ship builder, the yard that it was built at. There's quite a few pages in that. Okay, as we get to the back of the book, we start getting into more of the technical information on the armament. So we have the four inch gun begin with and we have some great technical drawings here of the four inch gun. We then have the uh, specifications, uh, pictures also of the two pounders pom poms and again some great technical drawings for the two pounder. Information on the 20mm Eulerkin cannons and the 303 inch Lewis machine guns, uh, the twin Lewis machine guns that were on the engineering roof. Um, great picture here of the uh, Eulerkin in use and you might not be able to pick it out because it's quite dark but um, from my build video we had the splinter shield um, and as I if you recall I told you about the shoulder rests here um, but also the back strap uh, which is modelled on the Great Little Ships um, kit. This particular Eulerkin has a shell casings bag um, for spent casings underneath. Um, we also have a six pounder at uh, Hoshkish Marks <coughs> Hotchkiss QF quick firing Mark I on non recoil mounting. Uh, now, this is a weapon that I didn't realise the flowers had, um, but it was interesting to note that some of them did. And some great technical drawings for the Hotchkiss. Um, we then get information on the depth charges, depth charge throwers, the racks. Um, so great technical drawings on the throwers. And a really nice um, black and white photograph of the crew loading a depth charge into the thrower on HMS uh, Dianthus. We then get a chapter on surface search radar type 271 and a nice picture there of Bluebell. 
again, we get great technical drawings in the call outs on here. So the lanterns had a couple of different patterns. You had like a, an ex, a hexagonal one, um, which is apparently an early pattern. And then the later pattern was the rounded version. Information on obviously that radar. And then we have a um, gallery showing the appearance of the uh, various ships. Now, a lot of these uh, flowers were also converted for mine sweeping. So we've got photographs showing the mine sweeper gear in place. Um, more technical drawings. Great view of a bridge. Now this bridge doesn't have the Oilican cannons. It's still got its Lewis mounts, which were fitted early stages of the war and then replaced later on. And then we've got different type of bridge builds. Okay, so we've got builds for when it had a short foc'sle uh, and the mast forward. And then we have obviously the builds for the um, later bridge versions where it had a longer focal and um, the master behind the bridge. Um, another good bridge shot showing um, the bridge or, or a bridge um, prior to the fitting of the surface radar. And again, just more technical drawings, various bits and pieces. And ship layouts, information on dinghies, um, life raft storage. Now, this might be interesting for people building Snowberry. This is a perspective view of HMS, HMCS Snowberry as fitted after second refit uh, at Galveston, 29 January 1942. And one of the things that's interesting to note on this is the second life raft stowage area, which is in the Revel kit, um, you would put a life raft on it, has actually been um, changed and now stores the um, floating uh, smoke markers for um, marking where uh, a submarine, as, as you go over it, you mark it so that you can come back and continue depth charging in that sort of area. Um, So this slightly um, different layout might be of interest to people maybe building a, a later war snowberry. Um, and then we just, as I say, this is really sort of like all appearance. And then we get into some technical drawings showing um, internal arrangements um, when it had the extended forecastle, um, and deck plans, etc., for these ships. Okay, so selected references at the back. Uh, just gives you some more information on bits and pieces. But the thing that, again, might interest people modelling is it does list model products and gives um, information and websites for various um, companies that produce kits or upgrades. All in all, this is a really nice book. I'm glad I got it. Um, one of the things which I have noticed in here, if I go back to the um, color plates, and that is that the 
Bluebell, along with many other um, ships, um, on the build instructions, the flagstaff is put at the end of the engineering housing. So it's placed here. On these pictures, the flagstaff is actually attached to the funnel. Now, there's quite a few ships that are rigged that way, and there are some which have the flag in different positions. So, for example, this one, HMS uh, Abelia, has the flagstaff at the end of the engineering housing. Um, HMCS Snowberry shows hers as being at the end of the engineering housing. Um, and there is a great photo, if I can find it again. It's this photo here on page 115. And it shows what I think is how the flagstaff attachment is made. So it's literally a C-section, um, a square C-section uh, bracket, which is triangular on the sides which appears to be moulded to the funnel and then it's obviously just supported um, in place with um, guy lines. Um, so yeah that's 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 quite possibly something that I'm gonna think about doing for my bluebell build. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have a think about trying to model a bracket to hold the flagstaff in place on the funnel. So as I say, flower class corvettes, um, ship craft, done by John Lambert, Les Brown, fantastic. It's I've, I only got this today, um, but you know I haven't really been able to put it down. It's it's been such a nice book to flick through, look at the photos, pour over the plan drawings, the technical specifications. Um, and everything and it's well worth for those of us that are doing a flower build it's well worth um, getting it I picked mine up for um, I think it was £10.50 off of eBay you can get it I believe you can still get it as an ebook or you can get it off of Amazon or there might still be some on eBay but I'm glad I picked it up. It's not a, a thick book. It runs at 128 pages, um, but well worth uh, the investment. So hopefully you'll see me next time. I have got some um, great little ships upgrade kit to review and do a build video for. It's the um, two pounder pom pom. Uh, for the um, anti-aircraft mounting on the engineering deck. So it's the weapon that goes in this uh, bandstand. Um, and I shall do that very soon. All right, take care, bye-bye.